Um, hello everyone, my name is Alfian Mushafa and I am very pleased to be a part of the International Conference on Economics, Business, Tourism and Social Science or IC BTS 2022. Um, today I will be presenting my paper which is titled Foreign Ownership and Productivity in ASEAN Manufacturing, the Moderating Role of Absorptive Capacity. So for today's presentation, I'm going to divide it into four sections. The first section will entail uh, a brief information about me as the author. The second section will provide a short summary of the research or the abstract. The third will give a brief description on how the research is conducted. And then the fourth or last and last section will give the theoretical and managerial contributions of the research. So a little bit about myself. My name is Alfian and I'm a final year double degree student from School of Business Management at ITB or Institute Technology Bandung. I'm currently studying international business at the University of Groningen as a part of the double degree program. Um, I'm very passionate in the field of finance and I'm a keen investor in the Indonesian stock market. My organizational experience involves being an, an, an analyst in the investment team, uh, a treasurer, and an independent researcher. So for the abstract of my research, so a little bit about the background. Um, so the theory underlying my research is mostly predominantly based on international business literatures. And it's based on the notion that foreign owned firms carry firm specific advantages that allows them to attain higher productivity levels compared to domestic firms. So the scope of my study will be Southeast Asia, where there is still relatively a lack of empirical studies on productivity differences. And in addition to that, there has been a recent trend of deindustrialization in the region where the composition of GDP shifted from the manufacturing sector to the service sector. So the objective of the research overall is to explore whether foreign owned ASEAN manufacturing firms experience higher productivity than their domestic counterparts, as well as whether or not the relationship is moderated by the firm's level of absorptive capacity. So the results of this paper suggest that there is a partial support for the existence of productivity differentials between foreign owned and domestic owned manufacturing firms in Southeast Asia. And then with respect to the moderating effect, uh, the relationship between foreign ownership and productivity is negatively moderated by the firm's absorptive capacity. However, it's important to note that the second result must be interpreted with caution as it lacks internal validity, which will be outlined uh, later on. The next session will delve in, um, into the description which will describe how my research is conducted. <laughs> so my research is for the most part quantitative using secondary data from a company database called Orbis. So in this database, you can obtain various financial information uh, for companies all over the world. And you can create your own variables, which are suitable for the purpose of, of the research. And then the analysis is done using a random effect GLS regression after controlling for country, industry, as well as firm level factors. My sample will consist of 688 firms from Indonesia, Malaysia, and Vietnam, covering the 2014 and the 2018 period. Now, why exactly do I choose uh, these three countries? It's because these three countries um, receive the most FDI, they receive the most FDI inflows into the manufacturing sector for for the, the period 2012 to 2016. And then in doing the research, I also address several important assumptions with respect to regression analysis, such as normality, multicollinearity, heteroscedisticity, uh, in order to prevent biased results. So I propose two hypotheses for this paper. 
The first hypothesis is that foreign-owned manufacturing firms experience higher labor productivity than domestic-owned firms in Southeast Asia. And then the second hypothesis will involve the moderating, the moderating effect of absorptive capacity, so which states that absorptive capacity positively moderates the influence of foreign ownership on the productivity of ASEAN manufacturing firms. So before uh, we go further, maybe um, I can just outline a little bit of the theory behind my hypothesis. So foreign-owned firms traditionally, according to literature, uh, possess higher productivity level due to several things. And this can, this, and this can include technical effic efficiency, where foreign firms are able to exploit economies of scales better due to their large size. This can also be due to skill intensity, whereby foreign firms employ a larger proportion of high-skilled workers paying them higher wages and therefore obtaining higher level of productivity as a result. Moreover, it can also be due to technological intensity where foreign firms employ more advanced technologies than domestic firms, which as previously mentioned, when they internationalize, they carry with them firm specific assets. And this can be in terms of technology, um, which then translates to um, higher level of productivity. So in testing for my hypothesis, it is important to control for three factors. Um, the first and probably the, the smallest scale uh, factor would be the firm level factors. This is based on the fact that firms may differ in terms of age, in terms of size, and in terms of capital intensity. So firms with um, that, have, uh, that are larger in size, for example, um, they usually have higher productivity irrespective of whether or not they are foreign or domestic owned. Similarly, um, firms that are older will also have um, higher productivity because they are more experienced than younger firms. So it is important to control for the firm level factors if we want to isolate the effect of foreign ownership. Um, it is also important to control for industry level factors uh, because previous studies highlight that foreign firms tend to cluster in high productivity industry. And then lastly, uh, it is also important to control for country level differences because again, since this study involves multiple countries in the analysis, there will obviously be differences in things such as labor market regulations, financial markets, trade policies, and human capital, which can all contribute to different level of productivity. The second hypothesis um, will test about the moderating effect of absorptive capacity. But first, maybe let's define what absorptive capacity means. So in my paper, I define absorptive capacity as the ability to absorb new external information, assimilate it, and apply it to commercial ends. And this definition is based on uh, the paper by Cohen and Leventhal in 1989. <clears throat> In addition, um, objective capacity facilitates knowledge and technology transfer um, between firms. Um, and why exactly does objective capacity positively moderates the effect of foreign ownership? Well, this is because if we conceptualize multinational enterprise as an interorganizational network, um, subsidiaries within this network can share knowledge between each other. And one of the ways they do that is by having a certain level of the capacity where they can absorb knowledge from different subsidiaries and share their own knowledge to other subsidiaries as well. So based on this logic, uh, we can say that absorptive capacity um, facilitates knowledge and technology transfer within an ME and therefore um, improve the level of productivity. So here is what it looks like in, in terms of a diagram. So the first hypothesis is the effect of foreign ownership on firm productivity. And the second hypothesis is the moderating effect of absorptive capacity on the previous or the aforementioned relationship. And both of them are hypothesized to be positive. So the econometric model looks like the following. So um, I have two models uh, which are to test hypothesis one and hypothesis two. 
So each model is used to test uh, different, uh, differ, differ, uh, differing hypotheses. So model one, which will test hypothesis one, whereas model two will test hypothesis two. Um, also, if you look at the equation, you can see that most of the variables are measured using a logarith in, in logarithmic, logarithmic form. And this is done in order to allow for easier interpretation, um, as well as to address uh, several issues with respect to, for example, outliers and normality. <clears throat> so the results of my study um, is that in line with hypothesis one, for an ownership variable is positive and significant in model 1a, but insignificant in model 1b. Um, and for an own ASEAN manufacturing firms, therefore experienced 25.5% higher sales per employee and 33.77% net income per employee than domestic firms. So here you can see that I measure um, productivity using two proxies, which are sales per employee and net income per employee. However, if we look at the second model, which tests for the second hypothesis, we can see that the interaction firms differ completely and change from positive to negative. Um, and in addition to that, if you look at the interaction term, we can see that absorbed capacity, instead of positively moderating uh, the relationship, actually negatively moderates the effect between foreign ownership and productivity in ASEAN manufacturing firms. So what are the conclusions of my research? So my research provides a partial support to the proposition that foreign ownership confers uh, the proposition that foreign ownership confers a productivity advantage after controlling for firm industry and country level factors. In addition, when absorptive capacity is included in the regression, uh, in other words, the second hypothesis, foreign owned ASEAN manufacturing firms actually possess lower productivity levels, as can be seen in the previous slide. And in addition to that, the results show that absorptive capacity actually widens this gap or negatively moderates the relationship. Um, and these are the several theoretical and managerial implications. My study highlights that foreign ownership is a significant determinant of productivity levels, even after all factors are controlled for. In addition, the results derived from this paper support the notion that foreign owned firms carry sp firm specific assets that consequently translate to productivity advantage. And, and from a managerial or policy making perspective, the existence of productivity differentials in the manufacturing sector should prompt governments to introduce policies that incentivize manufacturing FDI inflows since it contributes to uh, productivity differences which might spill from foreign to domestic firms. Of course, like any other studies, these studies have several limitations, but the main one uh, is missing data as it relates to the second hypothesis. Therefore, the result that are uh, obtained from the second part of the analysis might lack internal validity and should be interpreted with caution. And in addition to that, future research should examine the ASEAN service sector, which is on the rise. And this is done in order to complement my research, which is done on the manufacturing sector. And that concludes my presentation. Thank you very much for listening. Um, I hope um, this provides useful insight. And if, if there are any questions, please feel free to email me and contact me as um, as can be seen on the slide. Thank you very much.